today we're going to be talking about after school routines and how to build regulation, relating, and reasoning with our children. When kids are at school all day, they have to be still and they have to be calm. So coming home can often be chaotic and cause meltdowns and lead to frustration. So setting up an after, after school routine will have um, kids feeling more regulated because they can reduce stress, they know what to expect, and it can help create schedules to help you as well. One of the things you can do is have a designated spot for backpacks. When kids first come in, they often want to drop it on the floor. If you have a bucket, if you have a hook to hang up, if it goes in their room, wherever that space is, then the kids know that's automatically the first place. You can put your lunch pail, make sure there's nothing inside of it. Nobody wants that half-eaten apple to be rotting in the backpack, in the, in the lunch pail. So having a space for it already sets the tone. Another one as well, kids are often quiet, especially in middle school, they don't have recess anymore, so they need play time. So they've been doing all that, so you want to set up either time to play outside, time to get the wiggles out, doing just dance, or go noodle. One of the dances on YouTube, you can look it up. If you don't prefer internet in your home, you can have routines set up, print out pictures, um, yoga routines, your worker can have those things, or you can print them out at Sassy, just to basically get all the wiggles out. Some kids need structure in doing their homework right away. That way they have to do the activity first and then earn the playtime and things. If that works for your student, absolutely. Homework can oftentimes make them feel that they're not good enough though, so sitting next to them. Even if you're not doing the homework with them, just being in the area. Sometimes what I like to do is I'll be prepping dinner, like cutting up things, and they're at the table working. That way if they do know they have a question, I'm right here, but it's their time and they can do that. Another one too is reading. Reading is so important and even if it's not required, it's just there to help kids learn the vocabulary, learn to be independent. Um, some of the things too, they might not know the words. So being able to spell it for you or have an older sibling or someone else in the house that knows those words, that's how they learn them is learning how other people pronounce them. Another thing, reading to a pet, reading to a friend, um, all these things can help them with their homework, with their reading, with their vocabulary. Another thing, snacks. Sometimes kids at school eat at 11.30 and they're at your house at 3.30 and dinner's not till 6.30. All of these things, having a place that they can just grab a snack. It could be a healthy one, a fruit or vegetable, a fruit snack, a juice box. These things, especially if you label them like after school snack, they can grab it on their own. They don't need to ask or have it out on the counter already if you want. Um, like the little oranges already peeled or something, just to be able to give them a little sense of, I haven't eaten in a long time and I want that. It can also help boost the brain to be able to do the homework and the reading and encourage them for those things. Um, outside play and activities, you have those NMT cards we put inside your bags when we did our last um, <clears throat> get together. You can use those cards. If you don't have them, please let us know. Thank you, NMT cards. Please let us know and we can get you a set of these for free. These have re repetitive activities, the things to help work for the bottom brain, um, especially things jump roping, chalk, using their brain stem. All of these activities um, give you exactly ideas of things you need activities to keep them calm. Has those ones working with Play-Doh, working with kinetic sand, uh, kinetic sand. These activities can help them regulate and help you also keep them distracted. Another one that also tends to work is stations. At my house, my, t my kids sometimes won't get along if they're doing an activity together, so we do stations. That way everyone's independently working on their own. So someone will be at the table doing homework, someone will be playing outside, someone will be upstairs reading by themselves, someone will be playing a game. These stations usually last 30 minutes. There's a timer. When it goes off, then they switch stations. This way also helps they know exactly where they should be. They're not arguing with their siblings. They don't have to share. They don't have to fight. Multiple kids as well. Each one has something that they can do. And then also at the table, but we have, <clears throat> excuse me, that you can um, have one-on-one -on -one time with the parents, especially with multiple kids. They need to know after school activities, you know, what they've been doing, what they need help on. So it's easy to build that relate and relationship when you're asking. But sometimes how was your day at school is very open-ended. So asking questions to get to know them deeper would be better. Like, what'd you have for lunch today? What was for breakfast? What's your favorite lunch that the school serves? Who made you smile today? What made you laugh? 
What's something you learned for the first time today? And these questions will have them give longer responses, get to know them more. And if they're not having a good day too, an option to not talk or to not be involved. Another thing kids usually have things to be signed or assignments that need you involved. So that would be an open time for you to be able to discuss. Do we need to get that poster board before it's nine o'clock the night before? Do we need to have an extra lunch because it's gonna be a long day and you have sports after school? All of these things to help build that relationship, to help build regulation and to be the best parent you can for your kids, which is why we set up these after school routines. If you have any questions, your team is always here to help. We have emails, we have calls, even after hours, 24 seven, there's always a worker on call. They can all build these ones when they do have the meltdowns and things. Someone CPI to help deescalate the situations. We have these resources and we want to help. You are not alone. We are a family and a team here. And after you get these things set up, they'll be able to organically work on themselves. But some days it's not gonna work and you're not gonna be able to have the routine and that's okay. Then you work with that, but after you've built that relationship, you can be able to know today's an ice cream day and we all gotta go get, you know, Sonic or whatever those things are. Because, you know, having a sense of humor and flexibility is the only way to get through working in foster care and working with kids. We're here to help you regulate, relate, and reason. Thank you.